day and welcome to HTMI Hospitality TV. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Manfred Höger, General Manager of the Five Star Luxury Savoy Borrenville in Zurich. Mr. Höger, thank you very much for taking the time out to speak with us today. It's a great pleasure. Um, I'd like to start off by asking you, could you tell us a bit about your career path up until this point of you know, reaching General Manager of such a world-class five-star property? Yes. Well, when I started, which is quite some years ago, I started with an apprenticeship as a cook, and then a short apprenticeship as a waiter, and then I went to school for the administration and financial aspect of it. But of course, in those days, it was not as sophisticated as you do it today with uh, masters and bachelors. You just have been at Genesis Diplomate Hotelier. So then today... I, 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 I made different uh, 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 steps in a reception, uh, head receptionist, assistant manager, and then uh, I did not change too much hotels because there are two ideas of making a career. The one say he had been too he has too little experience because he had too little hotels mm -hmm. to look at. The other is fortunately he is a person settled who stays. So uh, whatever you whatever you decide could be wrong, but I was always at least staying two to three years in one in one place. This one I'm we are having now here, this position, we are now for uh, 28 years. So would you say that, you know, today in order to gain sufficient experience within five-star hotels, one should stay at least a minimum of two to three years in a I current position so. before moving on? I up. would say so. And if they could get the possibility of a, a, a training program, a good one, not just being used because it's cheap uh, uh, labor, uh, I think that would be a very good idea. Obviously, being a general manager, it's not a very easy job. It comes with a lot of responsibilities, um, a lot of hard work. What virtues um, do you think hotel school graduates <coughs> need to have today in order to reach the position of general manager? First of all, it's not a difficult job. If you Anything you do in life, you have to do it with pleasure, otherwise it's difficult. So therefore, uh, the system I have is one of the really Swiss traditional systems, being very close to the guests and also very close to the staff, but never, never touch them, going too near to them. Uh, for the youngsters in these days, I think the most important thing is to present themselves so that they are accepted by other people. Many, many times they try to be very fashionable, and a very special hairstyle and anything you can imagine, but that is not our our work to do. Our work to do is presenting a very serious and a very good uh, hotel with the best service, and the client is the center of our work. I think that is very important for young people to know. So, in, in your opinion, what defines outstanding service? Being not too near to the guest and being near to the guest. If you understand what I mean. No, correct. Never doing it in a, in a lower... You, you should be in the same level as the guest personally, but never going too near to him. Right. Show him respect and, and you will be accepted. So what type of, of service is today's five-star luxury traveler expecting from a hotel? There we, we are very lucky because we are a very traditional hotel. We are on the market since 1838. We have very, very special guests, very frequent guests. And you also have to look that you have the right guests under your roof. If there are guests who disturb other guests, we do not take them anymore. 
because that is only difficult for both parts. Less for us as managing directors, but more for the other guests who are going to be disturbed. You can see that especially with uh, dress code. People, in the old days, you did not to write dress code. People knew how to dress in the evening. Today, you have to insist in the dress code, not to disturb other guests. That is possibly one of the main things. Sometimes I feel that we have to educate the guests, the guests because they have not had a real good childhood or parents who didn't tell them how to behave. So, I mean, the guests also create that atmosphere, the ambiance within five-star properties. It is the guest who creates it. It is the guest who creates it. Mm. And one has to be very, very careful, not just looking after the turnover, but looking, first of all, after the quality. Once you have the quality of the guest, and the quality goes automatically up with the staff also. The moment they have to do with fine uh, clientele, they, they, they move themselves without telling a lot of things, you know. And uh, I think uh, it's very, very important to have uh, high quality. This does not mean money. Mm -hmm. High quality in the way you surf and in the way you behave and uh, not being, uh, as I said before, too close to the guest. What would you say is your ratio of um, loyal or repeat customers as opposed to new customers? We have about 85% regular customers. So how do you maintain that guest loyalty that they keep coming back? We give them such a good service that they're going to become our yeah. sales managers. And they, and they do. And the funny part is, when you have the guest as a sales manager, he will always recommend people in his standard because he wants to remain accepted. Correct. That's a very interesting uh, thought. That's how it is. And 85% we are recommended by our guests. We do not make any yield management because, as you know well, they reach each other or meet each other in the bar or somewhere and all of a sudden they start to talk about rate, room rate and everything and then you lose both. We never ever had uh, 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 this uh, yield management. What we do sometimes is that we do give our guests a promotion in when they have booked a, a double room to a suite when there is availability in the hotel but not Every time, right. once in a while, because if you do it every time, it's a standard. You get used to it. You get, get used spoiled, to it. Correct. You get used to it, and it's not anymore understood as a special gesture. <clears throat> so, how important is, as a general manager? I mean, you've spoken about maintaining this outstanding quality service. You know, giving the guests the same consistent service every time. So how do you instill these values within your the staff that work here in the Savoy? That is very easy. Each head of department is his own boss. And he knows what we ask for quality and for service. For this he is paid. The most important thing though is for us, if there is any complaint however big or however small, my wife or I have to know it immediately. Because then we can go to the guest and apologize. We do not argue if the fish or the meat was good. If the guest says so, we accept it and we are thankful for telling us because it can happen. But that is the most important thing. You will perhaps not believe that I never ever had meetings with my top staff. Only on Monday with the head of the, of the, of the cuisine and the banketing manager. But otherwise, it's a lot of time lost because you have to ask every member of head staff to sit and listen for the cushion of a suite or for the spaghetti in an Italian restaurant. So they, we are losing time for nothing. Because if something is happening, we have to know it immediately and right. it is going to be immediately resolved. And that's it. 
Because in a lot of many hotels today, they have the um, executive committee, you know, these 15, 20 minute meetings every morning with all the heads of department. Yes. Um, and nobody can be reached from outside in those, ta in those 15 minutes. And it can be exactly in those 15 minutes where there is a very important call and you lose the gland. I don't, I don't believe in that. But perhaps it's also, I have been brought up a different way. I fully understand that there are two types of hotels today. If you want to have it traditional as we have it, you better be very close to your staff, to your head department, and to your client. If you have a big chain, I fully understand that there is another different way of running it. But there again we come to the, in my opinion, to the future of hotels. In any case, there will be only two kinds of hotels. Absolutely top five-star hotel with absolute top service, but becoming more expensive than, the, than we are now. And the same hotel, absolutely fantastic rooms, everything, but no service. And the client can choose what he wants. And in those hotels, you can also have yield management because you are not really looking for a client who comes for many, many years, you have more contracts with companies, mm -hmm. they send different staff, right. and therefore it does not matter because then the, 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 the game is well known that they have yield management. If I go there, I get that price, if I go there, but no service because that is moving, moving people is the money yeah. you lose, you know. Standing at the, at, the, at, the, at the dinner banqueting, uh, I always say as long as the dinner is served, it's fantastic. But when they stay another hour with coffee, I lose all the gain of the banquet. Yeah. That's how it is. It's a very interesting concept because, I mean, there's always going to be those guests that can afford, you know, the five-star pure luxury. Yes. But then they obviously want but the service that comes with it. Yes. You know, yes. Correct. The moment you move, you move a person... It becomes expensive. How would you differentiate the Savoy Bourgainville from other five star luxury properties? First of all, we are one of the few couples. I mean, there is still the Sofreta house. Uh, this, this idea of having a couple uh, goes a little bit away with the management thought. I think with being married, and the hotelier is married to his hotel and to his wife. So he has no time for, for other stupid things to do. <laughs> uh, for me, it is very important because my wife is, is uh, uh, responsible for everything which has to do behind the curtains and which is extremely important. And I do the so-called show part in front of it. But one should never forget doing that part, that he should never be the main part in the game. I always say a hotel is like a big stage and the limelight is for the guest, not for, for the running right. person. So we stay behind the curtain, always in the shadow. You don't get sunburned, but you are always there to look at everything. You also have to look that also guests together move and they accept, accept each other, but never ever play the main part of the show. I like that thought. That's Can how you, it is. Yeah. As, you know, today, would you say that a general manager today needs to be more a leader or more a manager? A coach. Why do you say a coach? He has to, he, he should not show, first of all, uh, that he is a leader, because if he is one, he is one. You don't need to show anyone who you are. They, they immediately realize that, that you are the person who takes responsibility. You should be there to help your staff, first of all, and your guest. Leadership in the sense of being too floors up above has no connection. You're right, in, because a lot of people do not realize something. In our business, we sell a life. 
And knowing that, you have to be very sensitive of anything which is happening around you. So would you say that leaders today are born or they're made? I think both if you have if you're well born and then you have the chance to get good educated uh, I think I think they they are born and made but once they are made they should not show it mm -hmm. so it's more taking the back seat taking the back seat but knowing exactly because you don't really don't need anymore to show I mean, if, if you if you if you work on a show, you are losing in the end because right. nobody believes in you. Staff and client must know that you care about them, and that's the difference, in my opinion, for leadership. Can you tell us a little bit about your HR process from hiring to training and maintaining that service from housekeeper all the way up to manager? Yes. <clears throat> well, first of all, we have about. 90% of our staff over 25 years with us. When we see that we have somebody in the staff who is a second uh, a head waiter and we, we know somebody who, who looks for the first one, we give him the chance in recommending, recommending him because he has no chance with me because I have that all, you know. That is, that is one of the main things. And another thing is, which I personally think is the easiest way of running a place, never getting friendship with your staff. In all these years, perhaps for the, for the English speaking people it's not understood what I mean when I say with you and see, you know, mm -hmm. do and see. Correct. Uh, though I never ever have a, such a close uh, friendship with my staff that I would talk in, in, in the so-called you. I always family name, only for the Italian and Spanish people, uh, their Christian name, but always with senor. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's what it makes it. Because they must know that they are very appreciated and that they are not for granted and that we that we uh, 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 appreciate them very much, but they must also know that they have to do a serious job Correct. and not feel because they have 20 years, 25 years or 30 years, they're at home. They are at home, but they are not at home. So it's still maintaining that professional relationship all the time it must in be. your dealings. And there is another thing, saying yes, for peace in any situation in life, with children, family, married life, ends up in war. So if it is a no, you, it's a no. And I have behind my, my writing desk a saying which says, which part of no do you not, not understand? understand. <laughs> yeah. I often use that, that sentence. And, and I must tell you, it's very easy because we appreciate them, and I think they have the right to be appreciated. And the moment you, you keep them as a so-called friend, you sometimes say words you should never say. Mm -hmm. I think that is the answer. Very, very clear and strict management. Mr. Hirka, I'd like to ask you, what is your vision for the future of hospitality? First of all, we have to have families with parents who know to educate their children. If they don't know it, it is better to send them to somebody strange because strange people, funny enough, educate their own children better for a simple reason that there is no emotion. There is, as I said, as my management system is, yes, no, yes, no. I think in the past we have educated the youngsters too sweet. The British have a very good saying and it is, they say, if you don't know chocolate, you don't miss it. And for the last years they had too much chocolate. 
And now they have difficulties to understand that the system has changed, that it is not anymore after war. Everybody was happy, everybody spent money, everybody uh, 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 was had a good life. Now we have to, again, give quality. But how do you think the... What radical changes do you really see happening in the future? Uh, I don't think I don't think that there are radical changes because, strangely enough, uh, people always adapt themselves to the, to the situation. The one a little bit faster, the other one a bit a little bit longer. I think the radical change will be that there will be much less real luxury hotels, as I understand, and much more big chains. But they can do both a very very good job. But even within the luxury segment, you know, today we be we're in a very fast-paced technological world. Yes, yes. Do you think that within the, the five-star luxuries, they also need to embrace this technology? That would be the wrongest thing to do. I sometimes laugh to hear that staff gets, I don't know, every five minutes an email all the stuff being informed by the head management, that client, that you don't need it, you don't need it. And also I think they sell you a program for reservation whereby about you use 20% and the rest you just throw because you can't even use it. I think we have to come back to the standards, to the important things, uh, to have time for your guests, but with all the, the, the security, the controlling, the, 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 the fancy ideas of uh, uh, PR and, 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 and selling proposition, I think it's that, that's wrong. We should come back, and, and that is another very, very difficult situation, especially now in Switzerland. The apprenticeship which we had years ago where some had to do it two years, two and a half years. This is more or less gone with the wind. What they do want to do now is they make the apprenticeship academically. How can it be? I mean, if you, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're not a doctor or, or you don't have an, an, an academic degree. As long as you're happy and as long as you are professional, a, a, a very good carpenter, a very good cook, is much better for the society than having all wrong doctors who made the wrong decision in operating you. And I, I think we should come back to both. To both. Reinstall the apprenticeship as it used to be for at least two to two and a half years and then give them the chance, if they want to, to go further. But what we do now is that we have so much uh, 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 things to do by the government, by the society, that sometimes we can't even take any more an apprenticeship for cooking or something. That, that, uh, that, there I am very, very worried about the future. Because we, in our, in our business, most of the important things are done by people, not by computers. Correct. You know? And saying, uh, that is that is something which I'm not at all agreeing, but I'm perhaps the only one. Uh, they try in, 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 in groups or in, in chains that the telephone is the same way answered in Zurich, in Berlin, in Beijing, in... No. Let their personal, traditional way of doing it. You give them a base how you you want them to be to be uh, behaved, but otherwise let them let them be humans. I mean, I'm I'm really happy to hear you know from your mouth that the world of five star luxury you know it's still here to stay. Oh yes, definitely. Because the one thing perhaps I, even better. The one thing I really like and appreciate about the Savoy, you know, you don't use the electronic key cards. No, you still have the manual key, which allows that contact between the front desk, the concierge, every time a guest picks up the key or hands it back. <clears throat> I tell you something. I had a very, very expe a nice experience with a lady client in a certain age, a widow, who stayed in a hotel 
for uh, two or three months a year for for because alone fortunately the money enough uh, to to spend their time and then they reorganized the hotel and they took away the key and put the electronic cards now this lady had no reason anymore to have a chat with the concierge and to take her soul, which is the key. Right. Because in her age, or even a lady alone, she cannot go to the concierge. Nice weather today. Could we talk? Could we perhaps? Of course. If she needs the key, then automatically there is a little chat and she's happy. And she left the hotel. Can you imagine? She said, I'm totally alone. And I, I have been educated that I don't talk to a strange man. And if I don't need that, a key, so why should I go to the concierge? That, well, the, the reason for it is also that many luxury hotels try to make money in not having a concierge and, and, uh, and uh, they put somebody as, as a so-called reservation man. The reason is they don't want to spend the money they want to, to 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 get the money, but they don't want to spend for it. Right, and then you lose the and the then you lose personal service, and you lose a lot of turnover. Even if that lady doesn't drink each day five bottles of champagne, it doesn't matter. But she has a family, she has friends, and they all come to your hotel, and she feels well. Correct. And well, perhaps there are people who think uh, uh, dramatically in in how can you less spend. You cannot in a luxury hotel. Staff has to be there if there is one client in the hotel or a hundred. There is no reason to say, you are alone, we have no staff today. I think that's an answer to it. In your opinion, do you think five-star luxury hotels should have a long-term, long-term sustainable program you know, in order to adapt to the changes and the trends within hospitality and with the changing needs and wants of the guests today? <coughs> when you have a hotel traditionally managed, you can adapt yourself a little bit to modern changes, but never lose your, 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 your aim of service. And I think People come to the Savoy because it's the Savoy, and they go to the Ritz because it's the Ritz. But first of all, they go because there is nice staff and because they feel at home. And I do not think at all that people have to go after modern times, you know, because today, for instance, we don't have a, a so-called, uh, uh, what do you call it, for, for, for fitness, we don't have a fitness room. Everybody says, why don't you have a fitness room? You have to have a fitness room in these days. Now, our guest leaves about 7 o'clock in the morning and comes back about 10 o'clock in the evening. Business very often. So for what reason should I have a business, uh, fitness room? You know, you have to look really what to do. Then you see hotels, they made a spa. They made the spa not because of the client, what he needs really. First of all, they look, the colleague, and it has to be bigger. And it has to be more sumptuous. You have to know your client, and you have to offer what they want. Because uh, I see sometimes they're, in, in any case, always empty, or mostly. So I'm not saying if you have a holiday resort in the mountain where you cannot go to the seaside shore into the water that you have a swimming pool, but everything manageable. Correct. Manageable also in the investment. Not doing and never do anything for anybody else. Believe in yourself and ask your guest what he thinks. And then perhaps you you start to change, but kindness, service, 
will never die. That is, that in my opinion, is the most important thing. Well, I think you summed it up quite beautifully in four words, you know, when you said it's all about creating a home away from home. Exactly. I would just like to end off. Last year, I had the real privilege of staying in this beautiful property as a guest. And I got the chance to meet you for the first time and ask you a question, which I'd like to ask you now for our audience. I asked you the question, what is Manfred Herger's definition of quality guest service? Being there for them 24 hours a day. And, and they must not see because at 10 o'clock in, in the evening or 7 o'clock in the morning, I come with the face like, whoa, whoa, whoa. always smiling. It's, uh, no, it, it's a pleasure. We are paid for our pleasure. pleasure. Can you imagine? And, and I mean, whatever you do in life, it doesn't matter what you do. You do it well, or you, ch you just don't. Right. You just don't touch it. I think that's all. You know, Mr. Hoger, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, and thank you so much for your, the time out of your very busy thank schedule. You. Thank you. Thank you.